Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Behind me, I got a 2009 BMW 328 XI, which essentially means this thing's all-wheel drive. And today, we're going to be replacing the right front wheel bearing. But before we go ahead and do that, guys, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below because it definitely helps the channel grow. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started on the repair. All right, guys, so we got the car up in the air. We went ahead and we removed the wheel here, uh, 17 millimeters for the lug nuts. Uh, quite simple now where I always like to start on these the first thing is go ahead and remove your axle nut This has a spline style nut. Let me just kind of get the camera in there I don't know how well you'll be able to see but basically you got to have a spline style socket uh, You can't just take a regular socket and put it in there because it's not gonna grab So I have my specialty socket here. It's a 36 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and remove the actual axle nut And just like that, our axle nut is off. Normally what I like to do is try to see if I can press that uh, in and out. Uh, this one's not really moving. However, we will be able to get it out of there using our air hammer later. But it's always a good check to see if this job is going to fight you or not. Now the next thing that we're going to have to do, and I'm going to have to turn the wheel in order to gain access to it, is we're going to have to remove our caliper assembly. And I'm not going to be removing the caliper and bracket uh, individually, I'm just going to remove everything as one piece. So I'm going to get this wheel turned around so I can gain access back here to the bolt and we're going to go ahead and take that off. I was able to turn my wheel towards the driver's side to be able to give myself better access back here. And we're gonna be using a 16 millimeter, guys. And it's quite easy. You're gonna just be removing the caliper bracket bolts. I'll show you what they are here in a second. Just let me go ahead and take them off. Uh, but it's basically the bolts that hold on the caliper bracket and all. So I'm gonna use my 3 8 impact to get these off. Now that we went ahead and we got our bolts off, uh, this caliper you can see is still a little sticky. I take a flathead screwdriver and slowly try to just decompress the piston on the caliper a little bit to be able to give me a little bit more room. You want to be very careful here not to scratch up your piston uh, or do any harm to your caliper because if you do wind up scratching it up, sometimes you may have a brake noise. So uh, just be very mindful of that. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and take off our whole caliper assembly and we're going to take our caliper hanging hook and we're just going to go ahead and hang it out of the way here. Uh, never let a caliper hang by the actual uh, flexible line guys. There is a chance that it could get damaged that way. So you just want to play it very safe. And just to give you guys a little bit of a, a show here, because I couldn't really show you before, the two caliper bolts that we removed for the bracket, it's going to be one bolt here and one bolt here. They normally attach to the actual caliper at these points. It's just I couldn't get the camera back there to show you just because of the tight spacing this vehicle has. That's what I removed to get the caliper off. Now that our caliper is removed and out of the way guys, it's time to remove our rotor. Now these rotors typically will stay on here because they have a screw right here. It's a machine screw with the Allen head that will normally hold it into place. Now your car may or may not have this. It all really depends on who serviced it before. I find some shops don't actually put these back. I don't know why. If it's there, it takes 10 seconds. Sometimes they can get damaged if they seize in there. But what I find is that 99% of the time they come off. Uh, one thing you definitely don't want to do is just take a hammer and start beating on this because uh, it won't come off if the screw is there, guys. So just be very mindful of that. Usually what I find, once you remove this screw, the rotor wants to fall right off. Let's see if that's going to be the case. Um, it's normally a 6 millimeter Allen, so let's see what happens here. And exactly just how I thought the rotor wants to come right off. Uh, be careful because when that screw is not in there, you saw it move, it can easily fall on you. So uh, be mindful of that. And then we're going to go ahead and take our rotor and uh, just put it to the side here. The next thing that I like to do, guys, just to make this a little bit easier on me, uh, and if I'm going to press this, depending on how I choose to remove that bearing out of there, I like to remove this heat shield before I bend it or hurt anything on there. Uh, sometimes these come off, sometimes they do fight you, but there's a couple 10 millimeter bolts that hold it into place. Let's see if this one's gonna come off. So, so far, so good, that's one. And normally these bolts uh, are pretty, nasty so they will fight you let's see if we can get the second one and it looks like it is coming off as well and i'm gonna go ahead and do the last two here typically if one of them comes off the other ones come off uh, it just really depends so um, if you have one off you can get the rest and just 
just like that. I dropped my shield, but it comes off pretty easy. Um, and all it is is just this thin piece of aluminum. We're gonna go ahead and set that to the side as well with the hardware, because we're gonna need to reinstall that later. Next thing that I like to do, guys, is grab my air hammer and just make sure this axle is gonna be moving in and out of the splines here. So I'm gonna take my air hammer with a very circular blunt tip and just hit it in the center. Um, these axles, if you look here in the center, they have a specialized area where it's meant for you to do this just to get them moving. So let's go ahead and do that. And mine moved back in there. It was actually uh, not too bad. Uh, so now that that is moving and free and I know it's not going to fight me, I'm going to basically decide uh, right about now which way I want to go about this because I can choose to remove this whole assembly and press it in my press or I could try to use my on-car uh, brake uh, wheel bearing tool. Um, it just really depends. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I've never used the on-car wheel bearing tool on a BMW. I don't know if I have the right adapters. I'm gonna be uh, trying it out and test fitting it because I don't wanna mess around with too much of the suspension components on this car. Uh, at the very worst, I'd have to dislocate all the lower ball joints and arms and still leave it attached up top and I can, you know, swing it forward to be able to get my tool in there. So let's just see how this plays out here. But I do know that the next thing that we are going to have to do is go ahead and remove our hub flange right here. Now, some of you may or may not have a slide hammer. Um, the best way to remove this is using a slide hammer or using a, a press to remove it, whichever is easier. Um, I have a slide hammer, so right now what I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and attach my adapter here. Uh, you wanna have at least three points uh, of attachment when you do this, because otherwise you're not gonna be able to apply as much force as you want uh, on these, and you really need some force to get this off here. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this and get my slide hammer ready, guys, and I'll be right back with you guys. I tightened down my adapter after I cut off the video, I just used my impact gun to snug these up. And then what I'm going to do is take the hammer portion and slide hammers, if you guys have never seen one at work, are quite easy. Um, I'm just going to feed back my little locker bolt here. And all you got to do is just basically screw it in here. Um, and sometimes it's a little difficult because these threads uh, can get boogered up over time. Uh, with all the use and abuse that these undergo. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my threaded in here a good amount uh, before we go ahead and try to take this off. Um, so once we thread it in and we're happy with it, what I like to do is go ahead and lock it up uh, simply so we don't get any movement here. Um, so just like that, should be nice and tight. And I'm gonna zoom you guys out this way and just kind of show you how you're supposed to use this. Now, I doubt this thing's gonna come off in one hit and normally takes a couple of these hits, but let's see what happens. But the way you're supposed to use this is just after you attach it, you're gonna hit this really hard this way. You're just gonna slide it over. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. I'm gonna give it one or two hits on camera. And if it doesn't come off, I'll have to do it off camera. So it's not really coming off, but I do feel it's almost there. Let's just try a couple more hits here. We're almost there, guys. So sometimes it takes a few hits. And be careful, because when it's ready to come off, just like mine did, it does have a tendency to want to drop on you. So you want to make sure that you got this tool secure in your hand because all the weight on this is on the heavier end, which is right there. So be very careful. Now that we got our hub off, you guys can see we've exposed the ring that holds the wheel bearing into place or locks it in aside from the press fit. What I like to do is go ahead and hit it with some penetrating oil. Um, this could be anything you want really. It's really up to you. I happen to use PB Blaster. Uh, I find that it works pretty decently for me. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and give that a couple minutes to soak in. And then we're going to be grabbing our heavy duty snap ring pliers and try to remove the locker. Now that it's been soaking for a while guys, I'm going to take my heavy duty snap ring pliers. I like these Gear Wrench X-Force ones uh, simply because they multiply the amount of power that I have to use on this so it's very minimal on me 
Uh, hopefully this is going to work on this one. Sometimes it may not, but let's see here. Um, this one is pretty frozen in there. So I wanted to make a point because I knew that this wasn't going to go ahead and get these off right away. Uh, what tends to happen, especially to these, is they will sit there and they will basically get locked on. What you'll have to do sometimes, and I'll zoom you guys in here, and hopefully you guys can see, is you'll have to somehow get a flathead on here or some sort of impact and try to like move it inward that way and then grab this one to move it inward that way to kind of help break loose the clip. Uh, this clip has a tendency to seize in there and stiction will eventually hold it onto that. Um, what I like to do, and I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up here, see if I can kind of move you guys to the side, is I'll take my air hammer here and I'm just going to use that to vibrate it loose a little bit. So we got that one side loose, and now we're going to do the other one. And don't mind our ball bearings falling out. Uh, they will basically come out of there. And one thing you notice now is uh, we got our ring pretty freed up there, but it's kind of holding in. I'm going to move the camera a little back here because uh, I'm afraid to shoot the camera with it. Let's see if we can uh, get this thing moved up. So this one is not being very responsive to me here um, let me see if maybe we can do something with a screwdriver here um, it just goes to show how rust will affect this so my only recourse on this is to use my air hammer to shoot it up here see if we can get it rolling again Now, what I managed to do right there was I was able to rotate the ring. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that, but this right here, let me get you guys zoomed in. This started all the way over here, and I was able to rotate the whole thing. So that should eliminate any stiction on there right now. And hopefully, I'm able to get these pliers in here and move this easily now. So let's just see what happens. And it's kind of the same thing now. So. Uh, I'm gonna go off camera. Let me see if I can get another set. I do have a, another heavy duty set like this that I use. Let me see if that's gonna be enough to get this off. All right, guys, so I've managed to move this around a little bit more with my air hammer, and I had to pull out my actual heavy duty one. Uh, the way this tool works, it has this little side adjustable one, and it has really heavy duty ends to grab these rings. So I'm gonna go ahead and size it on here and Hopefully this tool will be able to remove it. Um, this is under pressure, guys, so be very, very careful. Now this ring was able to come. Uh, this tool was able to compress the ring. What I'm gonna do is just slowly work it off here, um, and be very careful because as you guys saw right there, it basically let loose a little bit. Uh, sometimes these can fly forwards and wind up hitting you. So uh, let me see here if I can get this bad boy to just come out. Um, typically. They shouldn't fight you this much, but for some weird reason, this one is uh, being extra annoying. Uh, to be honest with you, I've been at this for about five, six minutes now, and typically it doesn't really take me that long to get them off. Um, mainly, I kind of need to be where the camera's at, guys, so now that you kind of see the process of this, I'm just going to kind of cut the video here, because i got to be where the camera is and you know, kind of be blocking it. Uh, me working up to the side like this is not helping me. So um, now that we know how the ring comes off, I'll be back once I get it off. So it literally took about 30 seconds after I cut off the camera. I just did the same thing, except that I was standing in front of it this time. And I was able to basically squeeze it, use my screwdriver to pry out one end, and then just kind of release it all the way. And we have our ring in our hand. Um, now that we have our ring off, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit all of our joints here. Um, what I'm going to try to do on this particular one is remove the actual uh, lower ball joints and try to use the on-car press that I have to see if it will remove it while it's attached to the car simply because I don't want to disturb the shock here just in case there may be an alignment issue. But what I'm also going to do is also hit this up here as well just in case I do have to go that far that I uh, you know have lubricated everything and I'm not waiting any extra more time. Uh, so now that everything is lubricated and wet, I'm going to give it a couple minutes, let that uh, oil get in there, and we're going to start uh, taking apart the lower ball joints. 
While we're waiting for the penetrating oil to do its thing on the lower joints, we're going to go ahead and disconnect our ABS speed sensor simply because when we press it through, uh, you could damage the sensor. Uh, what I'm going to do is take my Allen in a 5mm configuration uh, and what we're going to do is go ahead and take this off. Now once you get the bolt off, um, if it comes off, you're lucky if it hasn't seized in there. Uh, so we are pretty lucky. And the first thing that you're going to want to do after you remove it is just kind of wiggle that sensor and see if you can get any movement out of it. Um, being here in Chicago, you don't really uh, get them moving quite often. Um, so they will be seized in there. And the only way that I found is a good way to try to unseize them is grab yourself a pair of pliers like this. Um, some adjustable ones and just try to grab this outside portion and it's going to be a little difficult because the camera is right where i need to be guys and just kind of slowly work it and see if you can get it off that way now that's what i'm going to be doing for the next couple minutes here uh, sometimes you got to be extra careful with this you do not want to break that abs wheel speed sensor uh, sometimes unfortunately they do break because they are seized in there pretty bad um, and if that happens we have no choice but to replace it but for the meantime if I could get it off I will try to get it off so by gently rocking it took me about five minutes or so just grabbing it on the sides here and slowly rocking it back and forth I was able to break free any of the rust holding it into place and I was able to remove my ABS wheel speed sensor um, this is how it looks guys uh, if it's broken halfway here or anything like that you're gonna have to replace it another good way to know if it's broke or not is to actually check inside of here and see if you can see right past it and see the axle or the wheel bearing uh, in our case I've done a few of these and that has uh, come off successfully so uh, we are good to go when it comes to that now that we've given our tie rod and ball joints ample time to soak in, what I'm gonna do is take a 24 millimeter socket and go ahead and remove our tie rod first. Uh, once we remove that nut, uh, we're gonna go ahead and also remove the 24 on this rear facing ball joint. And once we have those two off, there is one more left. I'm gonna have to reposition the camera and get it from the inside, but this front facing ball joint is actually going through the top. So the nut is located underneath the axle. So we're gonna have to attack that with a different method. Before we remove the nut holding on the forward facing ball joint guys, I think it's a lot easier if we were to dislocate our tie rod end here. Now we already removed the nut previously so we're just going to try to remove the outer tie rod out of the knuckle so that way this knuckle can swing freely. Now there's several ways you can do this and I've shown this in the past. Uh, you can use a tool on here that will basically help press it down. However, I find that sometimes those work or sometimes they don't work and they have a tendency to damage the actual uh, threads here. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is the old school hammer method where you take the hammer and just hit it. Now this one is a steel control arm. Um, I'm sure I can go ahead and just hit it without damaging anything. If this was an aluminum arm or anything like that, what I would be using is a brass hammer. So just be mindful of that, guys. We're going to go ahead and uh, get that disconnected, and we're also going to be using the same method on this rear-facing ball joint just to kind of get some stuff out of the way here and give us a little bit of a better area to work in. We went ahead and we got our tie rod disconnected and our rear facing ball joint guys and you guys can see everything now moves nice and freely uh, one issue that you're going to run into if you do it this way that when you go and take your wrench and you're going to try to uh, loosen up this you'll notice that it's going to want to move on you because there's nothing holding it into place in theory uh, what i forgot to do was crack this loose while everything was connected so make sure you do it that way if you choose to do it uh this way now if you missed it and you forgot that step you're not really uh at a disadvantage here what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and turn this all the way out as much as you can and come in from the back side here and go ahead and place your wrench on it and just go ahead and loosen it up that way just like that so we went ahead and we broke it loose uh, let me go ahead and get another spin under to make sure that it is fully off uh, before we uh, go ahead and turn it around so she is moving pretty easily uh, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and remove that nut holding the forward facing ball joint just to show you guys what I've been doing here because this will be the most tedious part is uh, I've just been here with my wrench and we've just been removing 
this uh, lower nut here that holds the forward facing ball joint. Uh, this is the part that takes a long time because you can't really fit anything in here because the axle is in the way. So this one takes quite a bit of time guys. Uh, just be mindful of that and I just figured I would update you guys. Um, sometimes uh, there's a bunch of rust in here that makes it go by a little slower which is what I've been kind of facing on this thing but all in all it's coming off. We're only a few threads away from it fully coming off. Uh, once I get the nut off I'm going to go ahead and dislocate my forward facing ball joint uh, and get that out of the way there and then we should be able to proceed on forward with the next step. Now that we got everything dislocated here on the bottom guys, you will see that this knuckle is free and loose. What I'm going to do is go ahead and push my axle out of the center here and just kind of move it out of the way, let it hang down. And then what I'm going to do here, if I'm able to, is just try to get this thing to swivel around. Now I'm not going to get a lot of degrees, but I have enough room in here to be able to get my tool so we can go ahead and try to push this out. And if I can't push it out, what we're going to be doing is uh, go ahead and removing it completely and taking it to the press. So let me go get my uh, on-car press set up here and let's see if we're going to be able to do this the easy way. Alright guys, so just to give you an idea of how I'm going to be pressing this wheel bearing out, I found an adapter that will go on the inside of the bearing where normally the axle would slide into. And if you guys will see here on the new bearing, um, this is a little bit smaller. But when it comes down to the diameter on the car, the knuckle does kind of overlap. So this is the only one that will fit in there to be able to push it out. And the way the setup goes is this goes on the back. And then you're going to have your nut. Then you're going to have this threaded rod that we're going to use with this cup being on the front. And then this adapter plate on the front. And what this all does is basically suck the bearing out of there as an assembly. Now, I can't really show you guys the setup on the car here uh, while I'm setting it up but I will be able to show you just as uh, I set it up I'll give you a quick glance how everything is and then I'll go ahead and proceed to remove the wheel bearing so I have my press tool set up uh, the way it works is just kind of how I explained you're gonna have this cup that's oversized that goes on the front it has this uh, plate that goes on there that fits it snugly you have your bolt with your washer that will run through basically the bore and then back here, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, I got my little press uh, cup that I found that will fit it perfectly and then we have our nut. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to be holding this end with a wrench and using my impact on the other end and as this basically gets closer together it should start pulling that bearing out in theory so let's see if we're going to get lucky and this will work this way let me go ahead and get my uh, gun and my wrench and let's see what happens so i'm going to try to film this guy so i'm not in your way but this may be a little difficult i'm going to have to kind of zoom the camera back and hopefully uh, that'll suffice but uh i got my wrench set up here and now i got my impact uh, we're going to go ahead and hit this and see what happens. Now you want to periodically stop and check. Uh, I do feel a resistance and it should not pop on me right away. Normally when it's about to give up, it does have a tendency to pop. Uh, so I'm just going to make sure that we have movement. And it looks like it is moving in there. But uh, for whatever reason, it just has a little bit of a stronghold. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed again here and we'll just see what happens. So right there, I hit a snag. I don't know if you guys heard the gun basically uh, just start locking up. So I'm going to tear it apart and see what happened because the bearing is definitely moving. But uh, I think uh, my adapter may not be applying pressure correctly to it now this is the name of the game when you're using this type of tool guys um, i'm going to go ahead and finish this off off camera to at least remove the wheel bearing and i'll bring you guys back when it's ready all right guys so we got our bearing out of there and i will tell you it was quite a bit of a fight uh, i'll take you over to the bench right now this is where we have our whole bearing and everything as you guys can see i haven't really removed it yet i uh, figured i would just do it on camera so you guys have a good idea of how this tool worked in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up my bolt here now from my press. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the 
first part off, which is going to be the nut. Um, so that's our nut, and our adapter just fell off right there. Um, now we are going to remove our cup, and you guys will see that we have our wheel bearing right there. Um, it's basically sandwiched when you're using this tool. That's how you're able to get it off through a sandwiching method. Uh, sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. It just really depends. In this scenario, it was a little bit of a fight, but we got pretty lucky and I was able to get it off. So I'm really happy, but we're only halfway through the fight. We still have to install it. Uh, that might uh, go easy or we might still have to take it off. So let's just see what's in the cards. So before we go ahead and reinstall our new bearing, guys, there's gonna be a little bit of prep work to do. Mainly what I like to do is take brake cleaner and clean up my areas. Now to be honest with you, even though this wheel bearing gave me a pretty good fight, it's not that rusted up in the bore. Um, I just think it was a really good pressure fit. Uh, BMW does have a tendency to make things uh, extra, extra tight. And I think that's the scenario here. Uh, because I was expecting to have some more rust in this bore. So all I simply do is clean them off with some brake cleaner. Um, I'm going to inspect the bore area and it looks really good. Uh, I don't see any ridges or anything. And a good thing to do is also run a good clean finger here. Just, you know, see if it's a nice smooth surface. And if it is, uh, just clean it up. Now before we reinstall the bearing, you will have to lubricate it. Uh, you can do it one of two ways. You can use, you know, some sort of you know penetrating oil like pv blaster which i'm more than likely going to use or you can use some wheel bearing grease uh, just a light film to help aid in installation however i don't like using the grease because the grease uh, has a tendency to not really dry up in a tight space and it could form a hydraulic lock and kind of you know screw you over in the process so i tend to use just some penetrating oil to make it slippery when needed and then eventually after a couple of days that penetrating oil will all washed out and it would just be uh, the two metal surfaces in there. So I'm gonna do some prep work here uh, on the bearing and I'll bring you guys back when it's time to reinstall it. All right guys, so now we're ready to install our bearing. Now there's one thing that I do wanna mention here. Um, it's not really applicable to this car, but some wheel bearings that are pressing bearings like this, they will be one-sided. However, in the case of this BMW, they're not. And the reason why they could be one-sided sometimes on, you know, even BMWs, but not this particular one, and every other car may or may have it, is because depending on what style pickup for the ABS you have, you may have a magnetic ring here that the ABS sensor could be basically reading off of to gain wheel speed for that particular wheel on the bearing. So if you do install a bearing, um, make sure that you test it or don't normally have some sort of a sign that says this weight inward or something um, and they tell you to be careful because it's magnetized. I have this nifty little tool that I got from Napa a few years ago that you put it on there and if it's a magnetic bearing it basically moves uh, the sand that's inside the tool it magnetizes it and you can see which side is magnetized or not. However on this one I know it's not and the main reason is if you look at our axle right here kind of dip you guys down uh, you will see that this axle has these little ridges and splines which tells me this abs wheel speed sensor reads off the axle not off the bearing therefore we're in the clear so now that it's time to install the bearing guys the way that we're going to be using this on car press is actually going to be the reverse way so instead of putting that cup forward and trying to get it to suction the bearing into it we're actually going to be putting it on the back side and on the front side you're going to want to find a cup or something that is exactly perfect to the bearing which in my case would be this one right here now i know this is going to be a little bit difficult to understand and to be honest with you uh, you may not be doing it this way. Um, this is a challenging job. Some of you may just want to take off the knuckle and, you know, go ahead and take it to a shop or, you know, put it on a press. And that's a completely uh, different way of doing it. However, since I have this tool, I'm going to utilize it. Um, it's not that it really saves me too much time because this thing still is a fight. Uh, but if I don't have to disturb anything else on the car, um, it's actually better for me. Uh, so that way I'm not, you know, let's say taking off the strut and possibly stripping a bolt and causing more downtime. So I'm going to take advantage of this tool while I have it. So what I'm going to do uh, now is go ahead and set you guys up and I'll show you the setup. So one thing that I do want to make note, guys, now that we're getting ready to reinstall it, I'm going to go ahead and drench up my bearing area here front and rear with uh, some penetrating oil and go ahead and douse it really good because you're gonna need this to help you 
Um, I did change my mind a little bit on this. I will be maybe using a little bit of uh, silicone grease on it as well on the actual bearing to help me slide it in a little bit easier just because of the tolerances on there. But uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and set my tool up and everything. I'll give you guys an overview of that next and then I'm going to go ahead and drive the bearing in. All right, guys, so just to give you an overview, I put my bearing in by hand after you saw me lubricate the inside of my knuckle, and I made sure I put it in there flat using my hand and make sure it was even. Then I went ahead and I put my adapter, ran my bolt through, and on the back side, we did the same thing where we ran our adapter and I ran my nut that holds everything together. And at this point, I basically hand threaded everything together. I made sure I greased my bolt that, you know, will sandwich them together to help reduce any friction. And we're basically going to do exactly what you saw in the other clip where I hold this nut on the inside and use my impact gun on the outside and the two should push together. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a snippet here. Um, let's see if we'll uh, get this right here or if it's gonna fight me so let's see what happens so make sure you're in the Titan mode obviously like that one right there that could have went badly if I just hit it so make sure that you're in Titan mode and let's go ahead and hit it now as you do this you make sure that everything is lining up and I do see that we have a tendency for this bearing to want to press more towards the bottom which means I'm going to have to adjust my setup here a little bit to get the full press so I'm going to go ahead and play with this guys I'm going to do it off camera like I said this is going to be a little bit of a struggle it's not uh, as easy as it looks when it comes to this so I'll be back once I have everything pressed in I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how the setup initially works but it does tend to vary from car to car all right guys it took me a while i'll be honest with you this kit that i'm using to try to press this is not the proper one for this because all the adapters aren't right but i was able to basically press the wheel bearing in um, as you guys see right here wheel bearing is fully in i still have the tool on it i haven't really taken it off um, i just spun off the back bolt a little bit just to check the bearing make sure it was properly seated uh, but all in all uh, now that our bearing is pressed in we're gonna go ahead and remove our tool which uh, basically all you have to do is unbolt it i already kind of like i said uh, unscrewed it a little bit because i have to check to make sure the bearing was flush and we're gonna go ahead and remove our adapters that we use to press it in now that we have our bearing firmly seated one thing that you want to do is always check the groove here make sure that you have enough room to be able to insert our circ clip uh, to lock in the bearing now even though this bearing is in there pretty tight you still got to retain it because there could be a situation where it possibly may slip so what i'm going to do next is we're going to take our locking ring now unfortunately the customer brought me this bearing and i didn't get a new one of these in the box with the parts uh, typically i'd like to replace these however this one's in good condition i just got to clean it up a little bit and i should be able to reuse it just fine so i'm gonna take this to my wire wheel clean it up and i'll be right back with you guys so we got our ring we went ahead and we cleaned it up and what i'm going to try to do is use the snap on uh, snap ring pliers that i have to try to attach this uh, maybe we'll get lucky here um, I'm hoping this will go on without effort. You basically have to squeeze it into place and make sure you can cover the diameter. And these can be really tough, guys, but if you guys notice right there, I was able to get it in. Now, if you just do that and you walk away and you think, yeah, it's in there, um, you would be uh, probably wrong because, look, what you're going to actually do is take a flathead and push on it. And you will probably notice here that this thing, if you caught it right there, it popped into place right after I tapped it. Um, that way you can guarantee that you got it into the groove. So I always go around with a flathead screwdriver and I make sure that's fully seated, make sure it's in the grooves and it's locking down the bearing correctly. Um, now that we have everything attached here, we have to go prep our hub face and flange so we can go ahead and get it pressed into the bearing. All right guys, so we got our hub flange set up on our vise. And uh, you'll notice here that part of the old bearing is still attached. We got to take this taper off. Now, the best way that I find to do this is to cut it at an angle and then go ahead and chisel it either via impact hammer or chisel and hammer, crack it, and then just drive it off. Uh, but before we do that, what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove this little ring on here. Uh, it's just in the way, so we're going to go ahead and use our flathead and get that off. 
Now, you can choose whatever method you want. They actually do make a tool that can grip this and you can push it in a vise. However, I just find that uh, that takes more time than anything. Um, like I said, I use my cutoff wheel here and I'm gonna go in here at an angle and I'm gonna cut it off. Um, I save my little bits here when they kind of wear down almost to the point where they're done just for this purpose so that way I don't wind up uh, hitting anything else on the hub. Now, we're only gonna cut through about three quarters of the way, not all the way. Uh, we're just looking to get enough of a cut in there and then we're gonna crack the rest of the way through it so we can loosen the tension to be able to get this off. And just to show you kind of a, an idea of what I'm gonna do here is I'll give you a quick demonstration. <laughs> So if you guys see the angle of my cut right there, I'm just gonna do that a little bit deeper, but not all the way through, and I'll bring you guys back when it's time to crack it and get it off. Now that we've made our cut in there, what I like to do is take my chisel bit for my air hammer, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and place it in there, uh, try to get it inside of the groove, and we're gonna go ahead and crack this loose. Now if you notice, it started moving. Um, we went ahead and we cracked it all the way, so now we should be releasing the tension. I'm going to use my air hammer in this angle and try to drive it out. Now you want to be careful guys, you don't want to mar up the surface too bad. Um, unfortunately there will be a couple scrapes on here, but they're not going to be uh, deep and I'm going to be able to get them off with uh, a cloth here. But let me just move it off the rest of the way. It's uh, kind of hard because uh, the camera is where I want to be, you know, fortunately. So I'm going to drive this out. All right. So I had to kind of move around the camera there. We got it off. You can see we did not cut into our surface or anything. We have maybe just a little bit of a scratch here or there on there. I'm going to run some crocus cloth uh, through there and just clean it up and we are going to go ahead and press our hub face in. All right guys, so we got everything prepped and ready. Uh, our hub flange here is cleaned up and ready to go. It is nice and smooth, we uh, cleaned it up. There's a little bit of darkening up here but it's not affecting anything. Normally you just wanna run your finger through it and see if your finger don't catches anything. Uh, and this one, it's good to go. Uh, we got everything prepped on there. So the next step is to basically lube this up and the interior of the bearing, and we are going to be pressing the two together. Now the way we're gonna do this setup, guys, is gonna be exactly the same uh, with the same tool that we removed the wheel bearing with. Um, it's ultimately the same as if you were pressing in the wheel bearing, except that it's gonna be a little bit longer, so make sure your tool, if you're doing it this way, has the extended bolt. Uh, because if you can see here, you have about five or six inches uh, before it goes all the way through. So you just want to make sure you got ample room on it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this set up and I'll show you guys a snippet of the setup and then I'll go ahead and press it in. Alright guys, so we have our setup here now. And one thing that's going to be different from when pressing on the bearing, because before the inner plate that we were using was actually putting pressure on the knuckle to be able to drive the wheel bearing in. Now this hub bearing and this hub the way they interface and i'll kind of show you here on the old bearing because uh, in the last clip where we removed uh, the actual taper part off of it if you'll notice uh, you're trying to press it in the center piece and you'll notice that these pieces are split and they come off uh, as you saw one came off on the actual hub face so when you put your tool uh, to sandwich the two together, you're gonna have to find a plate that is the diameter of the inner race and not the outer race. Because what'll happen if you're putting pressure on the outer race and this isn't being held in place firmly, what'll happen is as you press it in halfway, it's gonna pop this out and your bearing is not gonna be uh, tightened up in there with your hub flange. So it's very important. Um, if you don't have the tools to do this, uh, I definitely recommend a shop uh, because these can be a little bit challenging. Um, what I always tell people is if uh, you know you just tear apart the hub, go to a local shop, they'll probably charge you like an hour's worth of labor uh, just to press everything together and off and call it a day. Uh, usually you can save money that way, but also get the job done right. Now, I'm not going to film me doing this, guys, because it's just like the wheel bearing. you got to make little adjustments here and there when you use this tool. That's the biggest drawback to this. Um, I don't have like a real big name brand one. Um, I bought this kit off Amazon and it works pretty good, but you know, I wish I could afford the 
OTC hub grappler. Uh, I've seen a lot of other uh, mechanics out there use that and those seem to be pretty well built. Now this tool does the job too at about not even a fraction of the quarter of the price. It was actually uh, I think like $125 compared to you know almost $1,000 for the OTC hub grappler. So I'm just making do with what I have here. Unfortunately, I'm not going to buy a uh, $1,000 tool just yet um, because I've been getting by with what I have so far. And if this setup never really works, I always have a shop press in the corner that I could just take everything off and use my shop press. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up and mention this so you guys are aware of what's going on when we're pressing these two together. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started now. So I've gone ahead and I got everything pressed together guys, as you guys will see, the tool is able to sandwich everything together. Um, just gonna go ahead and take my tool off now as well. Uh, this part of it actually went the easiest guys. Uh, typically since you have two really good clean surfaces, it does tend to work a lot easier and it's easier to line up the center bore uh, than anything else because it's such a small area. Uh, compared to the wiring where it's a larger diameter. Um, this one, as soon as I tightened it up, got everything lined up, uh, put my gun on, it took about a minute, and uh, I just went in there. And uh, I just backed it up to make sure that it was fully pressed all the way. And the way you do that is, if you come back here, uh, what you want to see, and this angle may be horrible, but you just want to make sure that's fully pressed and nothing is pushing out, like ours over there. Um, on this hub flange, I did use a little bit of wheel bearing grease. Uh, the reason why I use grease on the actual hub flange when you press it together versus the wheel bearing guys is simply because we're going to be running an axle through here and this is going to be all sandwiched together and torqued. Uh, so there's no chance that it's going to let loose. However, the wheel bearing doesn't really have a real good safety clip on there that really holds it. I mean, I don't know, to me, wheel bearings being held in by just one of those clips seems like it's not the greatest. I mean, it works, but... You know, it apparently does work because it's been going on for years. There's never been failures, but uh, that's the main reason why. You know, just a little bit of a preference there. Not saying that that's scientific or anything in that sense. So now that everything is put back together, uh, you will notice that I did put my rear lower ball joint in and it's not bolted up. It's just there to hold it up for me because I needed to adjust the angle because uh, my caliper kept wanting to push it this way. Uh, so what we're going to do next is go ahead and install our axle and we're going to go ahead and put everything back together as far as the ball joints and the tie rods. So give me a second guys, I'll bring you guys in on the next clip. Before we install everything else guys, I figured I would take advantage that it's turned away so we're going to reinstall our ABS sensor here. Um, I already went ahead and kind of pre-oiled the hole there just to make installation a little bit easier for me. And what you're going to want to do is just, you know, wedge it in there, kind of help it out a little bit. Then we're going to uh, take our bolt here and make sure you start off the threads by hand, guys. Don't just take your impact and uh, attempt to run this down. Now, mine does have a little bit of spacing, and that is a little bit of a concern to me uh, because I simply don't want to have an issue where I'm trying to use the bolt to press it in all the way and it snaps in between. So I'm going to take a screwdriver here and with a little bit of force, I'm just going to go around it and uh, try to see if I can just get it in all the way. Um, so right then and there, we are able to get it into place. It just fell right in. Then we're going to be using our Allen socket and we're just going to tighten it up. And we're not looking to uh, go crazy on it. Uh, my gun is set up to snug mode, so it only snugs the bolt up. I'm going to go ahead and hand tighten that with the ratchet afterwards. Now, what we're going to do is, uh, let me just remove my rearward facing ball joint that I installed there, like I mentioned in the last clip, to so help me hold it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, uh, let's see, get this thing out of the way completely. And we're going to take our axle, and this may fight you a little bit, uh, but what we're going to do is try to line it back up here. Um, be very careful. Uh, you do not want to get your fingers caught. Uh, sometimes these will have a little bit of spring to them. And then what I do is uh, I'll push it in as I spin the bearing and then we have it, you know, pretty much locked onto place. Now, most of them should go in all the way right away. This one does have a little bit of a fight. So I'm gonna have to grab it and kind of push more into it 
but I'm gonna wait until the lower section is disconnected because now this whole assembly is just moving and free. When I have my lower ball joints attached, I have a little bit more structure to push it in all the way, and we'll do that towards uh, the end here. So let me go ahead and get set up and tighten everything up, and I'll bring you guys right back. Where you're gonna wanna begin on this one is going to be the forward facing ball joint, guys. This will be the one uh, that you'll have to pretty much put in place and try to tighten up before you install your rear facing ball joint and your uh, tie rod, just because it gives you uh, the best amount of room with those two items disconnected. Now, I already uh, put it through the hole there as you guys saw, and we have our nut hand threaded on there. I'm gonna hand thread it as much as I can. Hopefully I can get quite a bit on it. And then I'm gonna start snugging it down with my wrench. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera because this is gonna take quite a bit of turns with the wrench. It's going to take me a while. Uh, that way I don't have to bore you guys in five minutes of watching me spin a bolt down. So I'm hoping this camera will pick this up guys, but I was tightening my bolt up and you guys will see here that now the ball joint is spinning with the bolt, therefore it's not tightening itself. So I'm going to have to get a little creative here to be able to tighten that back up. And the way I'm going to choose to fix that issue is going to be using a on-car lift, uh, I guess you can say jack stand, which is this guy right here. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do in theory is raise the vehicle up put my jack stand underneath it, then put a little bit of the weight of the car on the ball joint while it's on the lift and go ahead and tighten it up. That should give me enough force to squeeze the two together. If you're doing this in your garage at home, the way you wanna do this is with a jack stand and maybe lowering it on there, or if you have another jack, you can just jack up the front suspension. Now I can't do it that way here because I'm currently on a lift, so I'm gonna have to use my on lift hoist here. Um, and we're gonna do it that way. So I'm gonna get that set up here and tighten it up. I just wanted to share this with you guys. I thought I would show you guys how it sets up on the lift. As you can see, I got the weight of this on my actual stand and I dropped it down a little bit and I was able to push that ball joint up far enough to where it locks in the taper and then tighten up that center bolt. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to need to get rid of our jack stand So we're going to lift up on the car And you can see it wasn't a lot of force that was on there, but we did need just a little bit guys. Um, Unfortunately, this is very common sometimes uh, when you're hand threading stuff like that with a wrench It does want to fight you um, and that is the, the cause um, What I did right there was I put my rear facing ball joint into my socket and what I'm gonna do on this one in particular is I'm going to take my 24 millimeter socket with my impact gun now I'm not gonna impact this on there all the way I will torque it but I'm gonna use the gun to spin it on there really quick so that way when I go and tighten it it's not gonna spin in the joint to help aid me in this too uh, I do put just a little bit of penetrating oil to clean off any dirt or debris. So let's see if this will uh, pan out for me here. Now I have my gun set to speed one, so it's not really uh, tightening up like crazy. Uh, I figure this is given about 45 foot pounds. After all, this is the small Milwaukee gun, not the big one. Um, but I know that it does have a small torque rating. And while I have everything set up here, what I'm gonna do next too, is go ahead and take my tie rod here and we're just gonna go ahead and push our knuckle out now it's gonna fight you because I hung the caliper on the spring there um, and plus the axle isn't fully seated all the way yet uh, so that's why it doesn't want to fight you and same thing on this guys I'm going to spray it with a little bit of oil there uh, just to help aid the bolt installation and then what I'm gonna do is Use my socket and nut and just drive it in. Now that one's nice and snug as well. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and get those torqued up. Now this middle one, guys, there's no way you're going to be able to get a torque wrench. Uh, if you guys will see on there, the axle is pretty much in the way. And you're not really going to get anything in there. I don't know how BMW expects you to tighten that. Maybe a crow's foot on a torque wrench. But I feel you would lose so much torque on that. So I tend to go hand tight on those, uh, get them nice and snug. Uh, everything else we're gonna go ahead and torque up off camera. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, I'll be right back with you guys. All right guys, so what we're gonna do next, now that we've torqued everything, our axle actually pushed in all the way. Uh, once I had everything attached there, it just slid right into place. We're gonna take our axle nut, 
and normally I like to replace these uh, and again I know I should replace it but the customer uh, didn't bring me one and uh, you can reuse them I mean it's not like they strip out or anything it's just because the locking tabs uh, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and spin that on by hand and this does take quite a bit of torque uh, on there so what I'm gonna simply do is use the same gun that has the low end torque just to snug it up and once it snugs up just like that, uh, I'll let it be until the very end when we're going to go ahead and tighten everything up and torque it. Uh, the next step that we are going to do before we forget, and it's very important that you don't forget because if you remove it, you got to reinstall it, is uh, make sure you reinstall your dust shield for your uh, brakes. Uh, it can be very easy to overlook this stuff, guys. Uh, I am guilty of forgetting to put these on every now and then. Uh, but luckily, I've always caught it uh, as soon as I put the rotor back on, so it wasn't a big deal. Uh, only one one time I completely forgot it, and when it came back for an oil change, it's kind of odd enough, and it came back to me when I used to work at a mom and pop shop. I recommended uh, that you know they put a backing plate under because it's missing, and then the advisor looks up on the RO. He's like, "Hey, Mike, you're the one that worked on this thing last on this side. We had a wheel bearing, so I'm pretty sure it had a shield. You probably took it off." And then I just remember, I was like, wait a second, I did have a shield that was just hanging out, and I always kept onto it, and I held it. And uh, sure enough, it was a shield for the car. I forgot to put it on. Now, luckily, my super, uh, my super good advisor was able to, uh, you know, mellow that situation out, and I was able to reinstall it. Um, they did kind of, you know, give me a little bit of talking to, um, because, you know, even though it's a piece, it's not super important, but at the same time, guys, when a customer's paying you to do something, you got to do it right. Um, and unfortunately I was young and new in the field and you know, I just kind of forgot about it so Now I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this up um, It has four ten millimeters here um, start them off by hand then use the gun guys Rule of thumb always uh, I would start off bolts by hand. I never just go gunning them on with the gun um, I will say that if this is rotted out and moving quite a bit and there's nothing left uh, It's probably a better ability to replace it or take it off at that point it all really depends uh, if it's a customer's car you got to let them know um, if it's your car choose to do whatever you want but as you guys can see this thing is nice and sturdy um, the next thing that we are going to do here uh, is go ahead and take our rotor and we are going to find where our alignment bolt is which is going to be towards the bottom here and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put in our machine screw here that will hold our rotor into place. Uh, I always try to give them a couple of by hand, guys. Uh, that way I know it's here a little bit, and then I go and get my tool. Um, I just impact this on. I don't go crazy with it, just, you know, snug it up a little bit. Uh, it's not gonna fall off or anything. It's just there to keep it from falling onto you and to keep the splines here uh, correct for your wheel. Um, now that we have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the wheel the opposite way so we can reinstall our caliper. So what we're going to do now, and let me adjust the camera, is go ahead and take our caliper off from our hanger. And we are going to go ahead and make sure your hose is not uh, you know, turned around or anything or pinched. Because uh, that's a big thing that can happen on here. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and install the caliper bracket bolt uh, that hold it onto the knuckle. Um, it's quite easy. Uh, you can see I'm doing it without even really putting my head back there. Um, as long as you line it up in the holes, you start threading it out by hand, um, you're pretty much uh, there. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do off camera is tighten this up. All right guys, so we are almost set here. The only thing left to do is to torque our axle nut into place. Now the way I do this is I take a screwdriver and I put it in the cooling fins of the rotor. Uh, so basically something like this where you can see it'll lock it and keep it from spinning and then I take my torque wrench and I go ahead and tighten it to manufacture specification now I've already gone ahead and I did that off camera as you guys know I don't like showing me uh, torquing stuff just because everyone has a different style and uh, I've been doing it this way for years the way I do it and I like my method um, now what we're gonna do is go ahead and push our little locks in so I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver if you have like a chisel go ahead and push the little notches in there will be two on each side just make sure you lock them into place um, 
I'll probably go over this with my air hammer or a chisel just because the screwdriver can't apply enough force there. Um, and once your lockers are set into place and you've jammed it up, all you have to do is install your wheel, take it out for a drive, and see how it drives afterwards. So that's how you install a wheel bearing on an E92 chassis BMW like the one we have behind us guys. It can be challenging and difficult. I chose to do it on the car, but in real reason, all you have to do is just, you know, remove one more bolt and you can remove the whole knuckle um, pretty much uh, if you're just losing the strut bolt from that point on and just take it to a press. However, I didn't have to do that. The less I have to touch, the better. But in my opinion, if I had to redo this job, I would probably just pull it out the car and do it on the press. That's a lot quicker and less, uh, you know, me forcing stuff and me having to do uh, certain movements. Uh, because this thing absolutely tired me out guys it is uh, kind of a stinker to do but it's doable so hopefully this video helps you guys out if you guys are attempting to do this if you are attempting to do this please make sure you have the appropriate tools at hand uh, because these don't use the standard tools like most other cars so with that said please comment like and subscribe guys because it definitely helps the channel grow and i'll catch you guys on the next video until then i hope you guys have a wonderful day